Hi, and welcome back to your autism game plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan. I'm a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Today, I wanna to give you a little information about food sensitivity testing, and when you might wanna do that on your child, and what you might find on one of those tests. Food sensitivities are a common, common problem with our kids who have autism. We don't exactly know why, but it definitely has to do with the health of the gut and the integrity of the gut. I want to give you a little bit of background information. What might cause you to suspect that your child has a food sensitivity? Well, one of the first things might be digestive complaints, constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, uh, belching, anything like that. Secondly, behaviors. Uh, bedwetting or meltdowns or hyperactivity or inability to focus. Those can be related to food sensitivities sometimes. Another thing might be sleep. Sleep can be really affected by food sensitivities. Imagine if that child eats something to which they're sensitive and it makes them kind of anxious or irritable. Um, they're not really going to have good sleep that way. Of course, very commonly we see skin issues like eczema or rashes with food sensitivities. Food sensitivities can also cause cravings. And very often kids crave the very foods that they're sensitive to. So if you're going to give into these cravings, it's a nice thing to know if you're feeding your child something that is healthy for them or whether this is a food to which they're sensitive and maybe that's why they're craving it. So that would be another reason why it can be helpful to do food sensitivity testing for your child. When should you consider food sensitivity testing? You know, the cost of all these tests can really add up. So part of what I wanna do here is kind of give you a, a, well, a game plan and show you, you know, what tests are really the priority here. I would say food sensitivity testing is maybe number three or so. The first test that I typically do is oat testing, and I've, I've done a video on that. The second test that I'll typically consider, depending on the patient, is the GI test or stool testing. And this might be number three. If we still haven't made any progress or if we have made progress, but we feel like maybe we've become stuck and we need a little bit more information, a little need to change things up a little bit to see more progress in the behaviors. So first thing, before I do any food sensitivity testing, what I see if the patient can do is eliminate gluten and dairy because very often I'm seeing this on the testing anyway. And so if we can just get rid of gluten and dairy first, then very often that will help a lot of the symptoms and we can either not do the food sensitivity testing or delay the food sensitivity testing. The other reason to do food sensitivity testing is that if you suspect that your child does have a food sensitivity, many times their diet is already very restricted and you really don't want to restrict it any further than you have to unless there's good reason to, like for instance, if a test shows a sensitivity. So it can help us to know which foods are important to eliminate from the diet and which foods are safe and okay to let the child eat. It's important to know that food sensitivities can change over time. And so what the child is sensitive to today may not be what they're sensitive to in a year. It has a lot to do with what foods they're exposed to. It has a lot to do with the health of the gut. Um, a leaky gut or an inflamed gut is going to show more food sensitivities than a healthy, intact, thriving gut. So you may want to repeat the food sensitivity testing periodically. Maybe that's every year or so. Another reason I do food sensitivity testing is because the food sensitivity can be a delayed reaction. Two or three days later, it may the reaction may show up. And so it's very difficult to determine what food is causing that reaction if, if the reaction doesn't show up for two or three days versus an allergy, a true allergy, which is going to show up much faster. Now, these food sensitivity tests are testing immune globulin G or IgG, you may see on some of the test um, advertisement or marketing materials. The IgG is that delayed sensitivity immune globulin, um, and they kind of put different foods up against um, the child's blood and see uh, what reacts. And so most of these tests are doing IgG, 
sensitivity testing. Some of them are also doing IgA. And one of the companies that I'm using is also doing complement testing. And complement is an immune factor in our blood that's responsible for one for one producing inflammation. And so that one is called the food inflammation test or FIT test. And not only does it test the IgG, it also tests the complement to see is there any foods that the child's eating right now that's causing that are, that's causing inflammation in the child. Two of my favorite tests are the KBMO company or that that's the fit test that I had mentioned and then also Great Plains Laboratory offers a, an IgG food sensitivity test. You can expect to pay anywhere between about $125 and $225, sometimes a little bit more depending on the company and how many foods you're testing for. Typically insurance is not going to pay for food sensitivity testing, but they will pay for food allergy testing, so the IgEs, and very often you can order those through Quest or LabCorp or these functional medicine labs as well. The advantage of these two companies in particular is they can run the test off of a dried blood sample, or you may see the letters DBS, dried blood sample. The nice thing about that is that it doesn't require a full blood draw. What you can do is just a finger prick with the child, and then the blood kind of squeezes out and you dab it on the paper and they can actually test that. So in a lot of ways, that's an easier collection, a less painful collection, less traumatic collection of the blood sample for the child. You may have seen food sensitivity tests advertised online in a variety of places. One warning is just be careful of some of those tests. Um, they may not be as reliable as they market. You want to do your research and make sure that if you're paying money for this test, it's a really reliable test. One resource that you can look to is your trusted functional medicine provider or somebody who knows about food sensitivity testing and does food sensitivity testing. It's worth your while to check with an expert on this because the last thing you want to do is spend money out of pocket and have the results be unreliable. Whether it's at the beginning of your journey or somewhere in the middle, you may want to consider food sensitivity testing after something like the oat test and the stool test and after eliminating gluten and dairy, for example. Food sensitivity testing can give really good insight into the foods that your child may be reacting to, even if it's a healthy food, for example, you know, sweet potatoes, are they sensitive to sweet potatoes? You'd wanna know that. Thanks again for joining me today. Always remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.